That don't look nothing like the skipper looked. Not for my money, it don't. Sure, Kanasi. You got him looking like one of them Joes on a war bond poster. The skipper was a man. So he was a man. What's this, a dame? That's not what Kinsella means, Kanasi. He means the skipper's jaw was like a... like a hunk of granite. And his eyes were blue. He. You make blue eyes with black ink. Simmer down, Rembrandt. All Pappy means is his jaw was tougher and his eyes were, well, kind and friendly. Look, fellas, don't get me wrong. I feel the same way about the skipper as you do. But I've done this over 20 times already. Just the same. All I can say is, if that looks like Mr. Cassidy did, I look like... You look like my young... And I hate my young... Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Take another crack at it, can I see? Come on, Pappy, it's your deal. Let's go, you guys, on your feet. Hey, you heard him on that double. My, my, how you talk. These lads just got no manners. Okay, fellas, let them do their job. Operation Overboard. Well, me and Joe are only Yeah, kidding. sure, we were just ribbing. Yeah, we don't think it's funny. We figure we didn't ask to be aboard this bucket, and if you guys... Sure, don't... sure, forget it, forget it. Yeah. What's, what's the verdict, fellas? Shall we toss them overboard or give them another chance to be little gentlemen? Oh! oh no, 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 you guys... Oh, come on, oh, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, oh, hey, Moss. Uh, uh, you guys been having yourself a fall. Well, me and Joe and the whole ship's company been waiting on your hand and foot. Like it was VIPs or something. We are. Tell them the facts of life, Jake. Listen, Swabies. There are roughly three million men in this man's navy. There are only a thousand of us guys spread out over the Pacific. You and your boyfriends have the honor, the pleasure, and the distinction of having aboard 30 of these. Fearless. Red blood. Death the fine. Amen. So you got to appreciate us. Gator to us. Make us feel relaxed and at home. Otherwise, some of you guys won't be around for the next mess call. Now shove off and swap the deck somewhere else. Come on, Pappy, give us a chance to get some of our plasma back. Go on, you've been taking mine ever since we left Pearl. How about you, Canarsie? You want to play? Me gamble? Nah. Anyway, I want to finish the picture. There's more than one way to wet down a deck. <laughs> Operation Manscott! Holy stuff, come on, I'm dirty! Trouble aft, Skipper. Some of Mr. Lawrence's boys tangled with some of ours. Serious? Not very. Usual black eyes, bloody noses. A lot of injured pride, no doubt. Uh, bound to have some friction sooner or later. Why? Well, you know, two different groups aboard a ship about to go into action. Nerves, tempers. Get all the facts, Bill. Light up all the men involved in the fantail and I'll hold mass. Whistle when you're ready. Aye, sir. I wouldn't worry too much about it, Lawrence. It happened once before when I ferried Jack Cassidy and his UDT gang out to Evo. Matter of fact, most of these same boys were with him then. I gave him all a tongue lashing and everything was shipshape again. Is that what you intend doing this time? Maybe. Why? It's your ship. Meaning I can do a better job of running it? Okay, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll hold master my boys and you do the same on yours. I'd like that, thanks. And you can be certain my men will give you no more trouble. We didn't care about getting a free bath, sir, but look what they did to our skipper, Mr. Cassidy. Yeah, Canarsie's been working on it for weeks, sir. We're all gonna sign our names on it and send it to Mrs. Cassidy. Sure. A man got a right to stand up for his rights, sir? What rights? Well, sir, we're not just ordinary sailors. We're UDT guys, and... That makes us somebody special, huh? Gives us the right to walk over everybody, throw our weight around. Well, I think what Catilla means... I know exactly what he means. We're UDT men, fearless, red-blooded, death-defying he-men. I know that song. And that's all it is, a song. It doesn't entitle any of us to extra privileges or favors from this ship's company. Mr. Klinger, I'm giving these men eight hours extra duty. See to it that they deliver a full 60 minutes in every hour. Is that clear? Aye, sir. And I want it understood that no part of this ship is out of bounds to members of the ship's company. Remember that.
Can't say some of you fools didn't ask for this. I'll work out the extra duty details of the ship's exec and give them to you at quarters in the morning. Take it easy. You know, Lawrence reminds me of a guy named Pulaski I used to know in Brooklyn. Everybody reminds him of a fella he used to know in Brooklyn. Whoever came from Brooklyn that ever amounted to anything. Winston Churchill's mother, the beautiful Jenny Jerome. Walter Hampton, Harry Houdini, Danny Kane, Mae West, Jean Tierney, Susan Hayward, Mickey Rooney, Barbara Stan McLean, Horn, and last but not least, Marvin W. Minkowski. Uh, who's he? Yours truly, matey, and keep your eye on him. This kid is gonna go places and do things. Like starting another picture of the skipper, but pronto. But pronto. What am I, a slave? Don't answer that question. from the flag, Nancy Hanks. Call the flag, see if they're on the Nancy Hanks, Smitty. Aye, aye, sir. Feinschmidt is on the Nancy Hanks now, sir. Here's the message. Proceed. On duty. Assigned. Message coming through now, sir. Hey, what goes? Do you see the blinker? No, but he can. Infrared. Uh, well, don't let my men know about this, or they'll have even less respect for me, if that's possible. Proceed on duty assigned. Good luck. Give him a Rogers, Smitty. Aye, aye, sir. Left, 15 degrees rudder. Steady on course 285. Steady course is 285. Rudder is left 15. All engines ahead full. All engines ahead full. Well, Lawrence, looks like the curtain's about to go up on your bathing beauties. Yeah. What time do we arrive in the area? Zero, six hundred tomorrow? Okay, I'd better get started. I'll see you later. Right. Say, uh... This, uh... This fellow Cassidy you mentioned this afternoon. Jack Cassidy? Yeah. What about him? What, uh, sort of a man was he? He was quite a character. You know, the kind of a guy that can charm the ears off an elephant. Yeah. The men thought a lot of him, huh? Crazy about him. He was crazier about them. He, uh, got it at Evo, didn't he? Yeah, after a mission. On the way back from the beach. One of his men was hit and knocked into the water. Jack went in after him. Never been seen since. When your number comes up, not a bad way to go. I'll see you below. Right. What about some cribbage later? No, thanks. Not tonight. I'm going to hit the sack right after briefing the men. Now as to the general plan of operation. This is Red Beach here. That's the natural harbor and entrance. This area over here is Green Beach. Now based on aerial photographs and intelligence reports, the enemy expects us to hit Red Beach. But the Admiral wants to fool him and hit over here on Green Beach, if it's at all accessible. Our job is to find that out. Mr. Klinger, you'll take Flanagan and these 10 men to go in on Red Beach, strictly to create a diversionary face. Blow up enough obstacles, man-made or otherwise, to convince the Japs that we're coming in here, Red Beach. I'll go on the other boat with Hodges and the rest to do a complete reconnaissance job on Green Beach. Is that understood? Yes, sir. We shove off at 0600. Roger, hour 730, that's all. A diversionary fate. Make a complete reconnaissance. How do you like that? Do you remember when we hit Ewo and Mr. Cassidy briefed us? All he said was, I'll take half the gang and go over and have a look see on Green. The rest of you go over and red and kick up a rumpus. He makes everything sound like a presidential directive. Well, I'm very happy to string along with him. I mean, idea it isn't going to be so rugged on Green Beach. Naturally. Why do you think the commander picked Green for himself? All right, knock it off. You'll both set out the mission in the break. Is that bad? See you manana. Come on, sir. Right. I hear this. Hear this, you jokers. The show goes on tomorrow morning. Everybody's in the act. The commander's going to do the recon job, and Mr. Klinger's going to turn on the fireworks. We're going to leave this bucket at 0600. So be on deck, ready, willing, and able. Who are you going with, Jake? Horse you like. Klinger. Then I'm your man. Me too, Jake. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jake. What's the matter? 
That's it, all right. Looks deserted. Deserted as a beehive in June. Well, we're beginning to lob them over. Yeah. in the water. Franklin. All engines ahead, one third, turns for five knots. Aye, aye, sir. Put boats two and four in the water, Bill. Have them drop after loading immediately. Put boat three in after they shove off with orders to stand by in case it's needed. Aye, aye, sir. Mr. Lawrence, everything's set? No. No, you can bet me you'll be here promptly at 0600. Not one minute before or one minute after. I think you'll find everything aboard according to your orders. Rosemary 4-1 is alongside. Okay. My group will go in Rosemary 4-1, your group Rosemary 4-2. Right. All right, over you go. Shove off as soon as you're loaded, Mr. Klinger. Aye, sir. All right, fellas, over the side. The skipper said we'll pick you up here at 0900. Right. Good luck. Thanks. Shut off. Full speed ahead. Bombardment group commander to lay down smoke in sector two. Grids nine to twelve right away. Aye, aye sir. All right. Now remember the flag's waiting for this information. 
I don't have to tell you how important it is that the flag gets it. On it may depend the initial success or failure of the invasion. So take a good look at everything. And don't trust the memory. That's what those slates are for. When you're through, come on back to the pickup line. Stand by for the boat. Okay, let's go. It's promising. Yep. You ready? Right now.
back up, run. gives us a signal, we'll touch off the time users. Remember, you've got ten minutes to late. Roger. Those Japs sure got this beat staked out. As bad as evil. Worse. Nothing to get by that jungle of concrete and steel. <laughs> They wing me. Bone looks okay. Just a flesh wound. We better get out of here, though. Those fuses aren't gonna burn forever. You hang on to my belt, I'll take you out to the pickup line. Paddling out of here, they'll pick us up with a sieve too. Hodges. Rosemary 4, Rosemary 4. This is Rosemary 4 1. Rosemary 4 2, receive direct hit opposite Red Beach. Request standby boat to pick up possible survivors. Exercise extreme caution. Demolition charge due to explode in six minutes. Over. Rosemary 4 1. Rosemary 4, 
I think I see a couple of fellas. Full speed ahead. Maintain your course. Why, well, are we going to pick them up, sir? There's a rescue boat on the way. But say those men are ours. Don't you think I know it? Swimmer 10. Oh, that's me, sir. Go ahead. 19, 19, 18, 16, 14, 10, 3, 2, 4. Check. Okay. There's a concrete hedgehog about 45 yards from the shoreline. Mm -hmm. There's a coral crib about 15 yards from the shoreline. Okay. No other obstacles. Will powder take care of the hedgehog and the crib? Yes, sir, about 125 pounds. Okay. All right, swimmer 11. Ditto with what Pappy said, sir. Only add one hedgehog at 30 yards. Who's Pappy? Craven there, sir. Got two sets of twins. Glad you're back, Flanagan. How's Kinsella? He lost a lot of blood. The doctor gave him some plasma, said he'd be okay. Good, good. Were you both in the boat? No. It was hit before we got there. Could you see it? Yeah, it was a direct hit. Then there were no possible survivors. I couldn't say for sure, sir. Under the circumstances, nobody could. All right, prepare a missing in action list. Inventory the personal belongings of each man. Aye, aye, sir. What did Red Beach look like to you? They've got it pretty well loaded, sir. We blew out some of the stuff, but not enough to mean anything. You'd say that Red Beach was highly fortified and impassable? Yes, sir. OK. All right, you all did a good job. I'm sorry it cost a few lives. It may save thousands. I hope so. Get some rest, that's all. Looks like the Japs are in for a little surprise. How much time before we come alongside the flag? A couple of hours. Two? Maybe a differential of 10 minutes one way or another. OK, that'll give me time enough to get on some clothes and prepare my report. But when are you going to hold the service? What service? Service for the dead. I hadn't thought about it. Obviously. Well, I hadn't. Well, I know you hadn't, or you'd have said something to the boys. Never entered my mind. Never did it before. We were lucky not to have had casualties before. No, 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 that's not what I mean. I've had casualties before. It's just that well, I simply never thought of it before. We'll do it when I return from the flag. Good. War is over. I'm taking a bath every Saturday night, whether I need it or not. How you doing, Kinsella? Still living and breathing. Don't let Commander Lawrence hear you say that. He might try to do something about it. Tried hard enough this morning. Ah, why get worked up over that hard-headed jerk? Attention! I'd have mentioned this before if I'd thought of it. When I return from the flag, we'll hold services for the dead on the fantail. Services for the dead. You just don't understand the man, Jake. He's really a good-hearted fella down deep. A warm, lovable self. Have Commander Lawrence stand by for transfer to the flagship. Engines ahead standard, turns for 12 knots. Stand by! Stand by! Heads up, here comes the line. Fire! I 
Starting up on the high line. Keep around on your in haul. Those lines have been known to bust. My conclusion is that the seaward approach to Green Beach is relatively clear. Whatever obstructions there are, we can handle by blasting. What do you think, Jack? Looks good to me. Almost too good to be true. It is true, sir. You can bank on it. No reflection intended on you and your boys, Lawrence. Oh, you don't know these UDT boys, Jack. They're prima donnas. <laughs> can you do this mission with the men you have left? Yes, sir. At what time will you be finished? We're sure to be out of there at 0800, sir. Good. HR stands as planned. 0900. I have this chart duplicated at once and send copies to all ships and the transport crew. Aye, aye, sir. Well done, Lawrence. Thank you, sir. Don't let us down tomorrow. We're counting on you. You can, sir. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Lawrence. Yes, sir? What's the matter with your leg? Oh, it's nothing serious, sir. Tangled with some coral. Well, look after it. Thank you, sir. Coral poisoning, all right. It's got a good hold on that leg. Should have told me about this this morning. Shooting a little temperature, too. How high? A little over 101. What can you do, Doc? We got a mission in the morning. You won't be on it. I've got to be. This is going to get lots worse before it gets any better. Well, can't you fix it up so I can at least... Best I can do, best anyone can do, is check, keep it from spreading. It'll have to run its course two or three days, probably. Then you'll be all right. Well, please do what you can tonight, Doc, because I'm going in the morning, fever or no fever. No use my arguing or exercising my authority. Mama Nature will keep you aboard. I'll be back in a little while to cauterize the wound, start wet dressings, and begin feeding you sulfur. OK, thanks. And look, Doc, hmm? this is just between us. <laughs> between us and Pete Vincent now. Hi, it is. All right, Lawrence. What is it? You know, my leg's acting up. I cut out on some coral this morning. I thought I noticed you favoring it. What does the doc say? And I won't be able to go on the mission in the morning. Let me see about that. Doc Oman's a pretty good man. <sighs> Rotten mess. Clinger gone, not a soul in the outfit capable of taking over. Some of those boys impressed me as pretty sharp. They're certainly old hands at it. Cassidy had a lot of Yeah. Faith. Well, maybe one or two could handle it. There's Flanagan, possibly Hodges. Flanagan's probably the best choice. This is no time to drop a monkey wrench into the works, but if you're thinking of Flanagan... Mr. Lawrence, have Flanagan, Kinsella, Cre No, 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 wait a minute. Never mind Kinsella, he's hurt. Flanagan, Creighton, and Minkowski report to me in the wardroom at once. That's right, thanks. I'll take it easy, Lawrence. You're in no shape. I'm in plenty good shape. I know what's eating them. They need to be told a few simple facts. Why not let me handle No, it? this is my baby. Okay. Captain just handed me this. You have the right to make this request for transfer. I'll endorse it and forward it through channels when we get back. I don't want men serving with me who don't want to serve with me. But I didn't call you here to tell you that. I called you here to tell you that I know why you've asked for a transfer. 
It's because I didn't put about to pick up Flanagan here in Kinsella. Is that right, Flanagan? Well, let's not stand on formalities. Speak up. Is that right? Oh, sir? Yes. The rest of you feel the same way, don't you? I thought so. All right, now I'll tell you why I didn't put about to pick you up. If I'd put about to pick you up, now we might have been lucky. Then I'd have been a regular guy in your eyes. Maybe even regular enough to be compared with Cassidy. But what if luck went against us? That charge was due to go up at any minute. What if it had? What about the big show tomorrow? You were on Red Beach, Flanagan. You know what had happened if they tried to hit it. Thousands of men would die unnecessarily. So that's why I didn't stop to pick you up. That's the decision I had to make. That's the kind of decision the Navy expects an officer to make. And that's the difference in thinking between us. OK, that's what I wanted to make clear to you why I called you here. We've got a mission to do tomorrow morning. It's got to come off. That's all that counts. Be prepared to shove off at Green Beach at 0500. Everybody goes but can sell it. That's all. Hodges and Jake are still down there with Hardhead. He's probably warning them that this is a strategic maneuver through an accessible area, which separates the outlying fringe from the tactical objective. And unless this situation... Chief Flanagan will be in charge of this mission. Good luck. Hold this out, fellas. is really laying them in there. So are the air boys. Looks like you fellas will have more than enough smoke this time. They'll need it. Who'd you put in charge? Flanagan. When I saw you this morning, I thought for a minute you were crazy enough to go along. Well, I suppose sick or not, Cassidy would have gone. Cassidy? I don't know. Well, I was going to go, but I analyzed it, and I decided I'd be more of a liability to the mission than an asset. Why don't you go below and lie down? It won't make much difference to the mission now. It will to me. Thanks, I'm all right. Get your fins and masks on. guys are busting to know what the score is. It seems Commander Lawrence picked up some coral poisoning and the doctor won't let him go in the water. Coral poisoning? Where did he pick it up? On the flagship? All right, all right. That's what they told me and that's what I'm telling you. Coral poisoning, my eye. He's got beachitis. <laughs> all right, save the white scratch. We got a job of blasting to do. Now keep your ears open. Here's the score. Pappy and I will be partners and go in first. Then Hodge and Kanazi. Then Marino and Sleepy. As soon as you get through tying off your charges, you'll give yourself plenty of time to get back to the pickup line. At least 20 minutes. 20 minutes. 2-0. You understand? All right, here we go.
the sign. I just don't skip that, Pappy. Skip it? Why? We got time. Sure you want to do it? I got to do it. I got a 50 buck bet with my kid brother. Well, let's get in there and get it over with. Get to it and get out of here. Get you, Pappy? Yeah, in my back. I'll get you out in deeper water, see if you can swim. <laughs> I'll try it, Pappy. I can't. I can't. Well, grab a hold. I'll tow you. We got a lot of time. This is Rosemary 4. Report your progress. Over. What do we do? Thank God we didn't hear. What about? Rosemary 4-1, this is Rosemary 4. Imperative, you report your progress. Over. What'll I say? Imperative. These things sometimes get banged up. I can see him! Touch your engine! There they come, Bobby. We're all right. Back. 
Tell the engine room to make turns for three knots. Turns for three knots. Aye, aye, sir. Have the crew stand by to pick him up, Bill. Aye, aye, sir. Uh, that sounds mighty good to me. You really sweated this one out. Better get below and see the dock right away. Would you uh, please radio the flag, tell them operation number 18 is completed. We'll go. Tell radio to send the following message to the flag. Operation number 18 completed. Aye, aye, sir. Hey, Sleep, this time I know there'll be girls on the beach. Pretty hula girls. Lots of them. Oh, come off it, kid. You don't have to go through them maneuvers to get a gal in Hawaii. Even Kanasi does all right there. Don't worry about me. Just ask any gal you meet in Hawaii about Minkowski's magic method of making moves. How's Pappy? Ah, about the same. That harness, or whatever you call it, with them sandbags would drive me nuts. What are they doing all that for, Jake? It's his spine. He's still got a couple of slugs in it. He can't be moved or get tossed around any. Why don't the doc just take out the slugs? Search me, I don't know. The pharmacist mate says they're gonna do it at the hospital back at Pearl. I think I'll go see him. Boy, that Jake sure busted up. Yeah. Tough Pappy had to get it. And him the only married guy with kids in the team. Hey. Hey, look. One of the Swabies said he saw him at Chow this morning. First time in three days. Maybe he really was sick. Ah, if you ask me, he was just pulling a diversionary camouflage. <laughs> Much, no, no, no. They keep me pretty well doped. Promise this mate says you'll be okay. Oh, sure. Takes more than a few slugs to kill me. Well, we sure were a couple of dopes. I could kick myself. Dopes? To pull a great gag like that on the Marines? <laughs> uh, I'd like to have a picture of my kid brother's face when he saw it. I bet he busted his britches laughing. Good morning, sir. How are you, Craig? Not bad, sir. Thanks. Good. Sorry I couldn't get in sooner, but uh, the doc tells me you're going to be fine once those slugs are removed. When did it happen? Just two seconds before we were picked up, sir. Well, that's too bad. I'm sorry. Write out the details, will you, Flanagan? I'll need them for my report. Aye, aye, sir. And tell the men the flag radioed congratulations for a job well done. Add mine. Thank you, sir. See you later, Creed. Now, don't you go and make me out a liar, Jake. You put it down that it happened just like I told him. Why start anything? No, Peppy. That's no good. Sooner or later, he's bound to find out about it. And probably have a picture of that sign in every paper in the country. Well, the heck with it. I'm going to tell him. He can like it or lump it. Well, he'll lump it. Well, let him. Yeah, I'll see you. Take it easy. Roger. Morning. Huh? Ah, good morning. I heard you were in for breakfast. Good to see you up and around. Thanks, Vince. Isn't it about time we drop this Vincent Lawrence business? Most everybody calls me Pete. <laughs> Why is John? Okay, John. Have some coffee. Help yourself. Thank you. We can get him some pretty good reports. Seems the landing was made with comparatively few casualties. Doc, give you a message from Flag? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Sounds like a presidential citation. Well, the team rates it. I'm glad for Flanagan. He did a great job. Yes, Bill? 
recorded message from Sinkback. Bad news, huh? I can always tell by Bill's chin if the news is good or bad. Oh, it isn't that bad, Skipper. Concerns you and your team, John. Yeah? Looks like we'll be parting company soon. Why is that? Rendezvous with Submarine Jack SS 259 at 1900 Greenwich Civil Time on 9 June at 2430 North, 152 East on special mission for UDT Team 4. Commanding Officer Submarine will supply all detailed information. Mm. Where would that be? Right here, sir. A real hot spot. You suppose the Bonins are our next objective, Skipper? Who knows? What do you think, John? The last I heard, we were going to bypass the Bonins. Well, no use speculating. We'll know in a couple of days. Well, Bill, we better look after this. All right. Pardon me, sir. Come in, Flanagan. Sir, I... Well, it's about how Clayton got hurt. It didn't happen the way Pappy said. How did it happen? Well, sir, you know how the Marines are always saying they're the first to hit the beach. It was never set very well with us UDT guys, so... Pappy and I rigged up a gag to pull on the Marines. We planted a sign on the beach saying, Welcome, Marines, with a team's number underneath it. Well, oh, wait a minute. Let me get this straight. You mean you and Creighton went ashore and planted that sign on the beach? Yes, sir. Before or after you touched off the charges? No, we took care of that first, sir. That's a wonder you didn't overlook that minor detail. Is that where Creighton got hurt? Yes, sir. Flanagan, you were in charge of this mission. I put you in charge because I thought you had intelligence enough to realize its importance. But everything went off all right, sir. You said yourself the flag congratulated us. You missed the point. You've been missing the point ever since I took over command of this team. You're a brave man, all of you are. You wouldn't be in this outfit. Nobody questions that. But your kind of bravery comes 10 cents a dozen and isn't worth a hoot more when the chips are down. And the chips were down on that deal. Klinger was gone. I wasn't able to go. I counted on you. I pulled for you to come through a man, a full man, brains and guts. I was even dope enough to think I might talk you out of transferring, recommend you for Mr. Klinger's spot. But you not only can't fill that job, you're not even responsible enough to remain a chief. And when you transfer out of this team, you won't leave as a chief. Is that all, sir? Yes, that's all. Pete. I was just listening to some trumpet playing. I fool around with it at home. No bother. When my wife's out, that is. Don't shut up. <laughs> Sit down. Thanks. Had enough anyway. How's the leg? Fine, fine. It's uh, not my leg that's bothering me. Another request for transfer. This time from the entire team. Looks like you've got what amounts to a legal mutiny on your hand. Yeah, it's a fine kettle of fish with that special mission facing us. You must have known that telling Flanagan you were going to bust him wasn't going to endear you to him and his mates. Now look, I'm not here to win popularity contests. Flanagan jeopardized an entire mission to say nothing of the lives of his team. On the basis of the book, there was nothing else to do, of course, but... But what? Well, everybody works differently. I don't know what to tell you. Well, I'm no Cassidy. Who said anything about Cassidy? Well, you practically said it. Sure, sure, everybody works differently, but not everybody wants to understand that. I know what these men want. They want a glad hander and a grandstander. Well, I'm neither. I never have been. People take me for what I am or leave me alone. Why get all worked up about it? Because I get so... Because it must be my fault. All these men can't be wrong. It's nobody's fault, really, John. It's just that all well, these men are hero worshiping their dead idol. They resent you for stepping into his boots. They resent anybody who had to follow Jack Cassidy. Yeah, I suppose so. 
And of all the strange breeds that might have come along, it was their bad luck to get me. For what it's worth, I don't think so. How about a little cribbage later? General Porters, all hands man your battle stations. General Porters, all hands man your battle stations. Collision, port side aft. General Porters, all hands man your battle stations. What's up? We've been hit by a torpedo. Port side aft, sir. Sonar, do you still have the submarine? Yes, sir. Range 2-0, 0, and opening. Looks like the sub's moving away from us. I'll turn away from her and open the range. Right full rudder. Right full rudder, sir. Port ahead full. Starboard back two-thirds. Port ahead full, starboard back two-thirds. the door level. We'll have to enter in the manhole in the overhead. On the double. Doctor! Give me the lantern. Doctor! Take it easy, Clayton. Stand clear. Doctor! Relax, son. Relax. Take it easy. Damage control. This is Ryan. Looks like the torpedo's a dud. About half of its lodged into the side. Sticking into the sick bay. And we're taking water. If it doesn't get any worse, I think the bilge pumps can take care of it. The doc's down there with the patient. I'll well, see if the bilge pumps are running at full speed. And rig up a working knife for us. Oh, yes. I better lead the way, sir. Go ahead. You all right, Creighton? Yeah. Yes, sir. Lucky I was sandbagging tied down. Okay. Okay, good. Can it be moved up through there, Doc? Impossible. It'll put too much pressure on his spine. I see. Take it easy, kid. We'll get you out of here. Know anything about torpedoes, sir? A little. Had a few days of this stuff during training. What do you think, sir? Warhead's been damaged. Had one like this back at the base. They called it the Kingdom Come type. Think we can take a chance on it till we get to port? Uh, that'd be a long shot. Well, the Honolulu was hit by that torpedo, and they got back to Pearl. And the circumstances are different. We got a damaged warhead, a patient here that can't be moved, and a mission to complete. I think we better take this up with Vincent. Well, you can call him on the phone there, sir. All right, you want me to do it? Well, you know more about it than I do. Okay. This is John, Pete. I'm down here in the sick bay. Looks to me like you've got a rough decision to make. Yeah. Yeah, that is a tough one. You think it's a dud? Well, it may be a natural dud where the exploder never was armed. That's happened before, even to our own torpedoes. Well, what's your hunch? Well, I'm no expert, but I'd say we ought to take a chance on removing the exploder mechanism. The odds are too big against assuming that that fish is an arm. You know how to do it? I'm willing to try unless you've got somebody aboard more qualified. OK, then I'll take a crack at it. Have Doyle order all unnecessary personnel forward. Good luck. Thanks, Pete. Vincent says to go ahead and try to remove the exploder mechanism. What do you need by way of tools? Believe it or not, nothing but one screwdriver. Let's have a screwdriver. Is this large enough, sir? Yeah, that's perfect. 
You all right, Creighton? Or do you want the doctor to give you a shot or something before he leaves? No, I'm okay. Okay. I'll have someone stand by above in case you want anything. That's a good idea. Thanks. Here's the light. Okay. Let's go, Doc. How's Creighton, Doctor? He's all right. Have all personnel move forward on the forecastle. And I'd like a volunteer to stand by here. Right. I'll stay here, sir. All right, Flanagan. Make sure nobody's left in this part of the ship. All right, on the double, everybody. The sea's getting rougher. Yeah, it looks like the bilge pumps can't handle a flooding. Anybody on deck? Flanagan here, sir. Lower the work light and the portable bilge pump. Aye, aye, sir. Work light coming down. Aye, aye. Bilge pump coming down, sir. Lower away. Flanagan, you better come down here. Aye, aye, sir. Hardly, Pappy. You can use a little company down here. Flanagan, lend a hand here. Aye, aye, sir. Try and plug that up. Yeah. See if you can find a thin piece of wood. There. A few of those tongue depressors will do it. You ever see the inside of one of these? Yes, sir, once or twice. Hey, grab that lamp. Bring it over here. I'm going to try to raise this high enough so you can insert those depressors between the firing pin and the detonator. It could be because I'm scared to death. Stand by. Okay, I'm scared too. Nobody in his right mind could be anything else. There's something holding it. They usually slip out easily. Got any ideas? No, sir. Nothing to do but nip on trying to pry it, I guess. Made some progress that time. We're still here. Good sign. Maybe we're on the right track. How much higher does it have to come, sir? I don't remember. Another inch or two should do it, I think. <laughs> but you better call the bridge. Ask the captain to slow down the ship a little. Aye, aye, sir. Yes, John? Commander Lawrence would like you to cut the speed down a little, sir. We'll go. How's it coming? We're still working on it, sir. Let me know the minute you've disarmed it. Aye, aye, sir. All ahead, one third. Make turns for five knots. All engines ahead, full. Turns for five knots. Aye, aye, sir. This is the captain. I'm sorry to say there's no progress to report as yet about the torpedo. I'll keep you posted. Next move, shift the side. What? Shall I get another bilge pump, sir? No time. Stand by. Now, you see the pin? She's triggered, all right. Now, take it easy. Ram it in. Okay, Creighton. The fangs are up. Vincent. We're okay, Pete. She's completely disarmed. That's great. Good work, John. Aye, aye. This is the captain. Mr. Lawrence and Chief Flanagan have succeeded in disarming the torpedo. <laughs> Damage control center, this is the captain. Get the repair crew busy right away building a copper dam around that hole. Got an extra cigarette? Brother, it sure feels good to be alive. Sure does, sir. 
Were you ordered to stand by up there, Flanagan? No, sir. Mr. Doyle asked for a volunteer to stand by. I appreciate that. Thanks. Happy's my buddy, sir. Yeah. Well, I guess that's that. There's nothing more we can do here. The fair party will be right down, Freedon. I'll stay with Pappy until they show up, sir. All right. You did a good job, Flanagan. Thank you, sir. I know Pappy would have done the same thing for me. Of course. beginning to smell the soft Hawaiian breezes. I can almost taste some fresh pineapple dunked in rum. My mind's on a grass skirt with a pretty wahine in it. Your mind? What mind? Ah. Uh, you suppose we'll get the same liberty we had the last time, Jake? Who knows? Seven days liberty with my pretty Leilani. Just terrific. Hey, we're circling! Yeah, we're slowing down. Look, a submarine! Hey, she's one of ours! That's a relief. What do you make of it, Jake? I got a feeling that Honolulu is far, far away. Oh, no! Got the bullhorn. This is Lawrence, sir. I've got sealed orders for you and ten of your men. Bring nothing with you but your toothbrushes. We've got everything you'll need. Let us know when you're ready to come aboard. Roger! Oh, no, no, no! Well, how do you care for them apples? And all that time, Hardhead let us think we were heading for Pearl. Put boat two in the water, Bill. Oh, yeah, sir. Well, I'll be looking for you same spot, same hour, three days from now. Good luck, John. I'll try my darndest to keep that appointment. So long, Pete. as quickly as possible. The captain wants to submerge as soon as we can. I see. The uh, captain's on the bridge. Follow me. Right. Captain Redford, this is Commander Lawrence. Glad to see you, Lawrence. Thank you. All ahead, standard. Steady on course 180. All ahead, standard. Steady on course 180. Harry, whenever you're ready, take it down to 200 feet where it's nice and quiet. All right, sir. Whatever it is they want you to do must be awfully important. I got strict orders not to run on the surface during daylight. Let's go below. I'm hankering to open those sealed orders. All right, sir. up a pretty good case of hives. Wondering about your mission. Well, I've been doing a little wondering myself, sir. I bet you have. Here we are. Good. Don't you have any idea where we're going? Oh, I know where we're going, all right. Right smack into Jap country. But I've been itching to know why. Well, the mystery is solved. We're ordered to blow up the only known Jap submarine pen south of the home islands. Well, what do you know? 
Submarine pen, huh? Yes, sir. We'd better break out these things. Probably our charts. Right. We've got a job of studying ahead of us. This is Commander Lawrence speaking. All members of the UDT stand by for briefing at once. All members of the UDT stand by for briefing at once. Mr. Flanagan and five men will create a diversionary feint. I and my group will make the hydrographic reconnaissance, etc., etc. <laughs> <laughs> and we leave the submarine two hours before daylight, 0300. Meet me here, fully dressed and equipped, ready to go at 0230 for a final briefing. Any questions? Okay. We've uh, only one more mission to do together. This one. After that, we'll part company. I'm sorry we didn't hit it off, Dutter. But I want you to know that I think you're a great UDT team. And I'm proud to serve you. That's all. Scope. When you're ready, I'll surface to let you off. Then I'll submerge right here, lie on the bottom. When you return, give me a did da did. Three times on the hull, hard. And I'll surface to take you aboard. Did I did three times on the hull, hard. That's right. We're ready now, sir. I'll get the men. Good. Remember, no talking on deck.
タバコあるか見ろ行ってみよう
かもしれないこんなこともあったからな行ってみよう I'll call you in, John. No. No, it'll take too long. <laughs> Look, after the shop, then we'll all get knocked off. <clears throat> now, listen. Listen, remember what I told you. Knock three times on the hull of the sub hard. Three times hard. Did I did? That's a signal. <clears throat> That's it. Repeat. Did I did? Three times hard. Right. <clears throat> I shove off. <clears throat> That's toy man. No, you've got your orders. Stop off. Let's toy me.
You all right, sir? Yeah, yeah, fine. It's just the darn bed, he just... Hi, Pally. How you doing? No, oh, not too bad. Yeah. Put your John Hancock on that. Down here. Can you skip her sleep? No, no, no. Hi, Flanagan. Good afternoon, sir. Canarsie finally finished this picture for Mrs. Cassidy. We'd like it to come from the whole team. Would you sign it, sir? You... You want me to sign it? Yes, sir. Sure, I'd be glad to. Thanks. Come up at the top, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Would you like a cigarette, sir? Yeah, yeah, please. 